boy oh boy happy monday i know i know i'm a little bit early hitting the go live button um that's because it does take a couple of minutes for the notification to go out once i go live so i thought i would just get a little head start i see so many of you over in the chat already i see becca and brie and samantha and nelly and angela and karen and linda feel like romper room i need my mirror <laughs> welcome everyone happy not only is it uh like the start of a new week it is the start of a new month who can believe it is november already november holy smokes that means there's only two more months left of this year that also means as i was just sitting here thinking sitting on my couch last night i have these great plans to hold a, a birthday party here in December. And I have like six weeks to get ready for that. So I am got to get back on top of things and get going. Yes, thank you. I feel better. I feel real much better. In fact, um, yesterday I spent most of the day organizing, cleaning, moving things in the garage. I actually overdid it a little bit. Not not health wise, but back wise, I was moving boxes of books and stuff. And finally, Noah comes out like, Mom, why didn't you ask me? I'm like, yeah, because I hate to bug you. Because um, that's just how I am. I'm like giving stuff away, you know, like I'm going to have in fact, if anybody watching is in the Las Vegas area, uh, this is just a heads up. After this show, I'm going over to the old house. And I am literally all of the stuff I had set on the side of the house that I was going to sell at a yard sale. I am just putting it out and giving it all away. There's some good stuff there. Um, if anybody would like to come by and grab the stuff, there's even two dressers, two little kids dressers, which it kind of pains me to have to just give them away, but I have no place to go with the stuff. So it's time to, okay, I'm almost tearing up even just thinking about it. They're little dressers that Noah and Rachel painted. And it's, yeah, it's good. It's causing, causing a little pain to just have to get rid of that stuff. But I have to get rid of that stuff. Um, so if anybody wants to come by, say, after like 4 o'clock this afternoon, you can uh, message me for the address or if you already know where I lived. Um, some of you do, <laughs> then you're welcome to come by and take whatever is put out to the curb because today is the last day in the house from hell. It's official. I'm, I'm done with it. It is what it is. <laughs> the movers are meeting me over there right after the show today and we're going to get the final amount of stuff moved and I got room in the garage now to put it in. Then life can like start moving forward again. Poor little Noah, um, he's been like isolated in his bedroom because he was the only one who stayed healthy around here. And so he actually got called into work today. So I was so relieved, get him out of the house. He's off working. And then his dad's gonna pick him up this afternoon. At first his dad didn't wanna pick him up, but I'm like, uh, hello, why? <laughs> he's, he's negative, he's healthy, please come and get him. And so finally I talked him into it. And so he's going to keep him until Rachel is better because I'm considered no longer contagious, but we don't know. I did not get Rachel tested um, because she's doing okay. She's like a kid with a bad cold, but um, I still don't want Noah getting anything. So take photos of the dressers and you'll have the memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will, you know. It, letting go of stuff is hard for me. I think, I, I sure some of you can relate. Letting go of stuff that we know has value is hard sometimes. It just is. You know, I I see value in everything. I don't think dog junkies will pick up. Um, they're closed today, so I don't even have a way to get a hold of them, unfortunately. Yeah, I wish I had a truck. I don't know if Tiffany it, it pops on and. And maybe she would like to help me get some things dropped off at Dog Junkies. I might, I might hit her up for that. Um, but she's getting ready to move as well. So we'll see. 
We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So today is kind of a special show. I have two guests that I'm bringing on that are sellers. Um, and this is unplanned. They're not, you know, YouTubers or anything. They are sellers like, like you guys over there in the chat and they have questions for me and we're going to look at their, their selling situations. One is a brand new seller. One has been established for about a year and hopefully some of their questions are some of your questions. So we're going to, we're going to go with this today and I'm going to first bring on Kim. Okay, Kim, you're going live. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so Kim is Desert Gal Curios, as you can see there in her little, oh, I can't point, I can't point to yours. <laughs> I can only yeah, point to mine. Right there. You go. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's hard with the camera. <laughs> Yes, isn't it? It's like a little, it's like mirror imaged and it's, it's a little weird to get used to. Yes, it is. So everyone's saying hi, Kim. I don't know. Can you see the chat? Yes, I can. Oh, perfect. Hello, everyone. Okay. Nice to be here. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So um, let's jump right into it. I First, tell me like one of your questions and then we'll pull up your store. Okay. Well, I've had this beautiful item on my store since February. Mm. It is signed. It is marked on the bottom. Okay. Let's I can't see. pronounce it. It's F L Y G S F O R S. Oh, Swedish. Yeah. It's beautiful. I've had it on since February. It okay. is signed on the bottom in a couple mm -hmm. places. I don't know if I've put it up on my store wrong. It's had 439 views. Okay. Um, Let's go take a look. And it's just gorgeous. Now it is very heavy. Mm -hmm. So the shipping it's, will be. It's made very similar to Murano glass. If you could show everybody the bottom of that again. Sure. Because it a lot weighs people, over three pounds. Yeah. A lot of people think that all the glass with the clear bottom like this and this technique is Murano. And in fact, there are other really good glass makers that There's are not. There's a signature Murano. right there. Yep. This is Swedish glass. It's very high quality glass. There is a collectibles market for it. But you can see you could be fooled and think, hey, this is Murano. So yes, just there's the other signature up there. Yeah, something, it, it doesn't have to be Murano to still be worthwhile and worth selling. So I just wanted to make that point out there because a lot of people think, oh, if it's not Murano, eh, forget it. But um, there's other good glass. So let me share my screen now. Doo -doo -doo. Now I already did a Google search for your uh, store name and I wanted to show people, this was the first result that came up. And this is the uh, one of the great things about having an eBay store is if you give someone your eBay store name, generally it's going to be one of the first results that comes up. So it makes it very easy for people to find you. So let's click over onto that. And there's your lovely store. Now you told me you have been uh, doing the store for about a year. I posted my first item about a year ago in November. Mm -hmm. And then I finally got a store a couple, three months ago. I put it up as a store. Okay. All right. But before that, I was just selling without a store, actually. So. Right. Okay. Now, you'll see eBay always wants to go into best match. So, I'm going to just, I'm, it's always fun for people to see. You've got 218 items listed. So, this is what eBay is thinking I need to look at first. And are these like older listings, newer listings? Some of them are newer, some are older. Okay. Um, if, yeah, like, yeah, some of those are um, probably a couple months and some of them are just recent. I started doing two a day and then through your niche Facebook thing. Awesome. So that's how I got up to 200. I actually get my husband to do all the photos for me. He's doing a great job. Your photos are really good. So, um, and then I just, you know, lighten them or whatever a little bit, but. Now you notice it has not shown me that vase that you're showing me yet. 
No, and it it went up in February. I thought it would go fairly fast, and I think I even priced it way low. I probably should have priced it at least double. Sometimes way low can be the problem. Yeah. So we're gonna find it. Wow, is that like it? It's just it's just buried down here. Oh, this is Fostoria heirloom. Yeah. So. Do I have a list of Fostoria? Nope, you have a pink opalescent candy nut trinket dish scalloped edge. So if you change that one to Fostoria heirloom, I think. Okay. I was thinking it was, but I wasn't sure. There it is. Oh, right there. there it is. Okay. So let's first take a look at your title. Vintage, Flixbar, Coquille. And I'm not sure if I'm even saying that right. All the Swedish people out there are probably rolling their eyes at me right now the way I'm saying it. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea either. And I'm I'm Scandinavian, so oh, okay. Um so art glass vase pink white clear. So what I would do is rework this title. Okay. Um, and before we go into too much, let's go over. Let's see if I can spell it right, please. Wait. Ah, F L Y. There we go. S. Got it. Yeah. Oh, let's see. I want to see. It's just showing me yours. I want to see. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. It's not going to let me shop eBay outside of your store, which yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> All right, let's see what else is out there. Now, of course, because I've already looked at your listing, it's going to show me that one is, is best match. Oh, look, you already looked at this once. Come look at it again. And that's a really good thing, you guys. Like e eBay's trying to push the listings that somebody's already showed interest in. Um, and you can see there's a range of pricing. And you can also see that that one that you have seems to be pretty... Um, I don't want to say common because there's not enough listings to call it common, but it's of all the ones out there, there seems to be a, several of them. Um, let's go look at solds because that's what really matters. Right. So there's been 41 solds in the last 90 days. It looks like Paul Cadell might be a name you want to add. I saw that on the exact same shape as yours too. So here's one. Now this one, someone took a best offer. They had it at one nineteen ninety five. Flicks for Coquille Paul Cadell MCM Art Glass, twelve and a quarter inch vase signed with label. So see how everything in that title pretty much is a term that someone could search for. The only thing I wouldn't have put in there was the twelve and a quarter inch. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else there really makes sense for this to come up in someone's search. See, very simple titles sometimes are much, much better. Here's so one. maybe take out like vintage and. Yeah, so I would, I would take out the vintage and I would start if somebody's looking for the Fligs Fours Coquille Art Glass Vase, that's what they're going to put in there first. Okay. Um, what does the 58 mean? That's a number that's on the bottom by one of oh, the signatures. It has 58 on it. Let's see. Oh. There it is. I wonder if that's the year. That's what I was wondering. I think I put that in my description. Yeah, I wonder if that's the year. Yeah, because it's, it's mid-century. Yeah. So if you're... If you're ever going to put, like, I would put a 1958. So that's okay. And I would just make it 1958. Okay. So that everyone knows what that stands for. I would take out the pink, white, clear, because those things can go into your item specifics. Um, in fact, is color in here somewhere? See, color's not in here somewhere. Okay. So you want to make sure that's added. And... The way eBay works now is those item specifics are also what 
is being searched in when somebody types something that they're searching for. It's not just your titles. It's looking in those item specifics as well. Yeah, like Kathy says, I don't think they're going to search a title by 58, but they could search by 1950s. Um, and, and believe it or not, if you have 1958, 1950s, eBay is going to recognize that that item that you're selling does fall into those parameters. Okay. So go back yeah. in and edit all that stuff in the, okay. Yep. 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 Uh, I would probably, because you've had this listed a while and you've had so many views, I would end it and sell similar and then make your changes in the new listing so that the views you get are going to be more accurate. I would also up the price. Now you saw one that sold with the best offer. Where was it? 119. So price it 119.95 with best offer. Somebody else has already proven that that gets it sold. Yeah. So I would not be afraid to do that at all. That sounds great. Yeah. And your I, pictures, your pictures are lovely. I, I I wouldn't change the pictures. I would just change up the title, raise okay. the price. And let's see. So you said end it and then relist. Yeah. And then just do a, a sell similar so it keeps all the pictures. It keeps all the info, but in this so you have to edit before mm -hmm. it goes live. Um, tell me about not having a return policy. Let's talk about that. I guess I just did that when I first started out. I've been thinking of changing it to like okay. a 14 day or something. Yep. I, I, at least 14. Yeah. I highly recommend you because as you all know, even though you say no returns, people know how to get around that by mm -hmm. saying item not as described. And if you offer the return policy, you're more likely to get someone who's honest and says, I just didn't like it. It didn't fit in the, when it comes to clothing, shoes, and that, you know, to give an honest response versus lying and making you, forcing you to take the return. So yeah. and the, the amount of increase in sales for having the return policy will outweigh the returns that you get. That mm -hmm. is, I was thinking of like, you know, 15, 14 or 30, I'm changing 30. that, but I hadn't got 30. 30. 30? Try, try it to the end of the year and see what happens. Kind of track what happens. Yeah. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that your sales are going to increase because okay. it does boost you in the algorithm. eBay is going to honor return policies over someone who doesn't have one. Let me just take a peek real quick. I have to go in and I like that tree, by the way. <laughs> I said, I like that tree. Oh, that's from the nativity? It's from a nativity. 218 listings and you've sold 37. So you sell a lot of what we call more long tail items. Um, so that's not a bad number. I'm sure, of course, you want to see that increased. Yeah. But it is the gift giving time of year. I see your nativity stuff is starting to sell. Good. Yes. Actually, I'm helping a friend out and selling her set for her. Okay. Because she's um, living in an apartment and just can't have that big set anymore. That's so. a shame. Ooh, those are cool. What is, which one is that? Those candles, those Lucite candles. Oh, I'm not, ah, my bad. They sold. <laughs> forgot to share the screen again yeah they sold let me let me pick over here some like 90 days worth of your sales i think on there 90 so. days yep 90 days in the last you know because i've my first item i ever sold was a um german wood smoker figurine okay all or yule type that was the first thing i sold so nice Keep track of that. Someday somebody's going to ask you, what was the first item you ever sold? I can't answer that. I yeah. honestly can't answer that. I'm yeah. sure it was something to do with horses, but. <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, eBay got rid of the 14 day return policy. It, so 30 is the minimum now. Okay. Thank you. Angels vintage treasures reminded me of that. Yay. Some, uh, some of you over in the chat are going to change yours too. Yeah. I highly, highly recommend it. Here's the thing, test it, test 
test the waters. You know what? If it if it's a disaster and all of a sudden you get all these returns or something, you can always go back. It's not yeah. something you permanently have to stick with. But I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think your sales are going to go up and your returns are, are going to stay the same or go down. I think everybody that's gotten their items has been very happy. The ones that have reviewed, at least. You so. have beautiful items in your store and your pictures are representing. A lot of times if the pictures aren't great, people take a chance. And they kind of set their expectation towards being disappointed. I mean, a mindset is such a huge controller over things. And then they go, oh, my gosh, I really shouldn't have bought this. And, oh, I'm going to find a reason to be unhappy with it. Whereas if you have the really good pictures and you price up, you're setting expectations for a different mindset for people versus and I'm just going to say it, we don't want the cheapskates buying from us and then regretting spending the money. That's what I work to avoid. Yeah, I have the opportunity to work with a guy that has a Poshmark site to list some of my items on in exchange for posting some items for him. So I'm going to probably move, put some things on there, cross list them with him because he has like 44,000 subscribers on Poshmark. So. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, just keep in mind, Poshmark is like a millennial market. So look at those things that the millennials think are cool and, you know, want to decorate with. They're not buying it because it's an antique or collectible. They're mm -hmm. buying it because of what it looks like. So just keep that in mind on the things you choose and, and you'll do great. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Did you have any last questions for me? No, I really appreciate the help. Thank you so much. I was trying to figure out what I was doing with this one so it wasn't selling. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those long tail items, but let's give that a try and please let me know if it sells after this. Great, I will. Thank you so much bye. and hello and bye to everybody. <laughs> and thanks, Kim. Thank you. All right. Hey, this is fun. This could be a regular thing, you guys. What do you think? <laughs> All right, let me answer a couple of questions over in the chat before we bring on Lynn. Um, let me back up here just a little bit. Uh, is it you that doesn't select policies in the shipping settings? It's, yeah, I don't use shipping policies. I don't use business policies. Um, I have tried them. Actually, I think on one of my accounts, I still have them just so I can have something different. Um, that other sellers are using and I hate the policy and the reason I do if I sold all the same type size kind of things and things were very consistent as far as my shipping it would be one thing but they're not like you know I can I can I could be shipping a, a two ounce pen one day and a 20 pound piece of art glass the next you know what I mean so policies don't ever like just stay consistent for me. So I like having each listing stand on its own merits. Your first sale was a ceramic potato. I love that. <laughs> yeah, Kim's getting lots of kudos for the great pictures. Yep, yep, yep. I use Octiva to manage my eBay stuff. I've had old listings I put up and forgot to change the policy to 30. Octiva won't list it until I change it. Yeah, yeah. And that could be like what some of the management software is really good at. Yeah. Um, how do you stop item returns just because someone didn't like it? You don't. You don't. You, you can't control human behavior. But what I find is if you are marketing to a different segment of the population that is not penny pinching, I'm, and I'm not saying that as a, as a bad thing. I'm a penny pincher. I am not my customer. I am cheap as cheap gets when it comes to buying stuff. Unless it's something that I really, really, really want for one of my collections, then I forget that I have a budget like I just did on Crazy Lamp Ladies. She had turtles. <laughs> Sorry if anybody was bidding against me, but there was no stopping me from getting those turtles. Um, but that's the kind of customer you want. You don't want somebody who's agitating first over whether or not they should buy something. 
and then they buy it and then they're full of regrets and then they're just like, oh, I couldn't really afford that. And then they're going to look for a reason to return it. So you just avoid marketing to that kind of customer. Doesn't mean it's never going to happen. Um, but generally speaking, you, you can kind of stay out of that. Cottage core grand millennial for Tosh. That is so true. What about Mercari? What, what about Mercari, Marcy? How do you link your Etsy store to other sites? I'm not sure what you mean about linking to other sites. Need a little bit more to the question. Let's see. Yay, Terry's going to change her return policy. I especially this kind of this type of year, this type of year. This time of year, you guys, people are looking at all the reasons why they should buy from you know, you versus your competition. So sometimes that return policy can be the make it or break it. So just go for it. I changed mine to 60 when it became an option because here's my theory. Here's my theory. And I'm guilty of this is that if I have to return something and I am given a 60 day window, I'm a procrastinator as are many, many, many Americans. And uh, I will wait to the last possible moment. And often what I do is forget about it. <laughs> and then I come back months later and go, oh, shoot, I didn't return that. And then it's like, okay, I guess I'm keeping it. Um, I suspect that people who are returning for the wrong reasons probably work a little on that mentality. So if you give them lots of time to return it, uh, chances are they'll just forget. So. There is that. So I go with the 60 day. Uh, remind you what I dislike about Mercari. Mercari is just to me has the cheapest of the cheapest of buyers. They are looking for extreme bargains. Um, the other thing that happened with me and Mercari was they changed some automated setting that made it so they started discounting my stuff. They added free shipping to things like it was a mess. So I just like, uh, uh, not dealing with that. And I'm sure somewhere in some <clears throat> small print, I probably agreed to it. Uh, but I don't, I just don't like devious marketing that way. So I just pulled out of Mar Mercari altogether. Uh, let's see. I think I'm caught up. Yes, that is true. Oh, Eblis is here. Hey, Eblis. Eblis is a company that I met at the Boss uh, Reseller Remix, and what they do, and I'm still, we got to set up our we, our appointment and figure out the details of how all this works. Maybe I'll have them on the show, too. Um, they do uh, storage and fulfillment for sellers like us, you kind of like Amazon FBA does with, like, new stuff that you can ship in. Well, they've got the warehouse and the shipping and all of that. So I'm going to be learning more about them. Um, we just met briefly because, I mean, hey, they were giving out chocolate. So <laughs> you want to get me over to your table, hand out chocolate. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, partially. <laughs> but they're saying return policy and shipping time are key to attracting buyers on eBay. And that is so true. But the um, eBliss, so happy to have you guys joining in the show today. Thank you. Thank you. We will definitely get you on the show because I am sure with all the people that I hear say, I don't have room for anything. And my husband's going to divorce me. If I bring one more thing in this house, that you are a solution that my audience needs. So we're going to make that happen. Definitely going to make that happen. Okay. We are going to bring on Lynn Tankersley. Hello, Lynn. Hi, Danny. How are you? I am doing well. This is so exciting. Two good <laughs> connections. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> well, as you know, I'm brand new, brand new at this. I don't have a store. I haven't even sold my first item. I'm oh, just boy. starting to collect. I am. Okay. I was fortunate enough to walk into a Salvation Army and find this beautiful 28 inch 
um, I believe it's Ellie Smith. Looks like it. Really? Um, <laughs> so I got now, that part right. <laughs> is there, does it have like a yellow edge? Um, it does, but where I'm sitting, you can't really. Yeah, it's kind of blending, but it looks like it's almost an amberina. It is. It is an mm -hmm. amberina. Ooh, okay. So what is your question about it? Pricing. Okay. Pricing. I have really no idea. And I've been searching and it's hard to find anything this tall. Okay. Let's, let's do, I will share my screen in just a second. So what, so you don't have a store. What is your user ID? Um, Lynn Tanker Slick. Lynn, oh. Let's see if I can find you. All right. Um, it's it's L Y. I'm sorry. L Y T A N K E forty nine. Okay, say it again. L Y T A N K is an echo forty nine. Did that come up? Nope. See, that's the thing with not having a store. It's really right. hard to find. Tell me an item that you have listed. I don't have anything listed. Oh, you don't have anything listed? Nothing. Yet. I've never listed anything. Oh. I am brand, brand new. Okay. And when I found this space, that's the next thing I'll tackle. But where do you even start with pricing? Okay. So let's answer that question. So I'm going to go back to my handy dandy little uh, eBay search here. So what that is, is a swung base. Now you can see there's lots of stuff here. I'm going to add Amberina because otherwise we're going to get lots of results. So here we have 151 results. So I'm going to sort by highest first. So you can see how many inches was the one you have? It's 28. 28. Now you don't want to really put that in the title because as you can see, there's 26, there's 34, there's 32. I mean, you, you can put it in the title, just put it way, way to the end at the title. Um, so it looks like we're at about 140. Oh my goodness. They charged 141.60 for shipping on that one. Wow. Ooh, doggies. Um, one forty nine ninety nine plus eighty eight shipping. But did you see how thin that one was? Yeah, this one's really thin. Like that one for one eighteen is well, I don't know. Just kills me to give away that much shipping money, you know? Yes. Well, and people hate to pay for it. They do. Well, it just feels like a waste. It always has. That was the whole premise behind free shipping was that it feels like you're wasting money. Exactly. I think we've just gotten used to the pain. <laughs> <laughs> now, being this is your first item that you would have ever been listing, you're probably not going to be able to get the top, top price. So it may be something that you might want to try locally first. Okay. Um, maybe even put it like on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, and I'd say put it on Facebook Marketplace for hundred at least 150 bucks. Okay. And you know, I money. have some I have some other pieces, but I find that when I go shopping, I am really crazy about the glass. I have some okay. Blanco water vase or water jugs. So maybe I should start with something smaller. Yeah, I would. I would. And Save so this. you have feedback built up from buying or you? I do. Oh, that's good. That's very good. So that's something I always tell people that are just starting out is go buy some stuff so that you're not starting with a zero feedback score. Correct. I, and you will be, I'm, I'm just going to warn you and anybody who's just starting out, you will be vulnerable to the scammers out there they are gonna 
they're going to message you and ask you to text them and do all this weird wonky stuff. And you just know that it, it only happens when you're brand new and then you'll be savvy to it. And then you can just ignore, um, but never, ever, ever contact anyone outside of eBay messages. That's for you and everybody out there. That's the number one way to protect yourself. Just ignore. Don't feel like you even have to respond when they, you get those. Just delete it. Make it go away. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This is going oh. to be quite a journey. I'm very excited to start. LaDonna's telling me, I think that's too high, Danny. Amberina Ellie Smith is very common. You know what? Here's the thing. I'm looking at sold results. I'm looking at sold results. We have one that sold somewhere in, you know, it's, well, here's, this one sold for 150, which means this one, let's see, you have to do the math, 150 plus 88, whatever that comes to, 200 and something. So that means this one sold somewhere in that range if you subtract the 141. People are willing to pay 180. Remember, combine the two numbers. That's what somebody right. paid. 118 plus 67. They play, paid close to $200. Right. I'm looking at solds. I'm, I didn't just pull a number out of you know a hat. I'm looking at what people have been willing to pay. Here's the thing. You list it at 150 or 160 on a local market, and somebody come in, comes and offers you 120. Are you going to take it? No. Why not? Right. No, why not? I well, yeah. Would I? How much do you have into it? Oh, sure. Fourteen dollars and ninety-nine cents. I'd yeah. take one hundred and twenty all day long and Absolutely. not have to ship that bad boy. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. 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 So, and that, and that's something to remember too. You guys don't, unless it's something you want to keep and collect and you know and there are those items that i will put my i won't regret it if it sells price on um, right. but the, for the most part remember what you paid for it and look at that margin and then also if you sell it on the local market you don't have to ship it because i'm talking about local pickup i'm not talking right about right Port the shipping. yeah and you may get somebody who says will you ship it and then you go, okay, sure. You pay the shipping. Um, right. So you always have that option. Yeah, that's that's going to be a booger to ship because it's yeah. oversized and all of that. But but yeah, you can't go broke making a profit, guys. Absolutely. Um, but but back to what uh, LaDonna was saying is like, no, I, I pulled that price based on Amberina swung base results that are like right there in front of me. So do not be afraid to price high, you guys. Do not be afraid to price high, but price high knowing you're doing it as a strategy to give yourself room to, to negotiate. negotiate. Yeah. Don't get stuck on that high price. You can ship with Facebook Marketplace. Yes. But you can also do local pickup, not have to ship it stuff. Correct. Which is also a really good goal. Okay, let's see. We got any questions over there? So what else? So you said you had some other things. I do. I have some um, blanco um, water jugs. Okay. And um, I have a blanco pitcher. It sounds uh, like you have good taste. Also, well, it's orange and then it's yellow and then it goes back to the orange again. Is that considered? Amberina, I mean, yep. you can, it's very distinct line between yeah. the two colors. Okay. Yep. Yeah. There was um, different ways that it was done, but it's really that combination of those colors. Right. Right. Seems like I'm finding a lot of Blanco out here. That's, and where are you located? In Michigan. Oh, in Michigan. Okay. Yeah. Where's Blanco based out of? I don't know. I was Anybody thinking know? that too. Who knows over in the chat where Blanco is based out of? Um, Jenny plus one says, you've got some good thrifts near you if you're finding all this good glass just starting out. 
<laughs> you know, it's developing the eye too. You know, if you guys start, I, I find like, how do I explain it? Like I will have blinders on about a certain type of thing. And then all of a sudden I will see like somebody else mentioned or something. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm seeing it everywhere when I didn't see it before. And, and sometimes it's just where our eyes are, are keyed in like, Metal stuff, you guys know me. I'm like, I'm blah. I, I just don't do metal stuff well. And then there's some of you who make a killing on metal stuff because you're more tuned into it. So, um, Indiana, oh, Indiana, West Virginia, blank. Okay, now I'm getting all kinds of answers. West Virginia for Blanco. Okay. Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> You're giving me all kinds of answers here. Is it not just in one location? I'm, I'm trying to, like, there's conversations going on that I try, I shouldn't try to follow conversations because then I get lost. Oh, yes. Don't buy back what you donate, Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been tempted by that before. Okay. It's in Milton, West Virginia. That sounds right. My goal is to, to collect what my children have broken over the years. <laughs> ah. I fortunately have not had that issue. My children have always been very respectful of the breakables. Yeah. The dogs, not so much. <laughs> but all right why can't you find blanco if you are in virginia you know it just sometimes there's no rhyme or reason look at like all the people in california that cannot find fire and light to save their life um and that's where that's based out of so who knows and then what always gets me is how this stuff travels all over the country and we're still able to find it undamaged like that just blows my mind i think that's why i love glass so much the old glass and finding the old glass pieces everyone in virginia saves it maybe maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah yeah so i would also challenge you since you have such great stuff is look into cherish.com cherish. i'm going gonna, gonna to pull up cherish for everyone because I, I talk about it a lot all right let me share my screen again so this is cherish.com make sure you do spell it like a chair not the other way I've heard it's bad <laughs> uh, I'm not testing that theory <laughs> I've just heard it's bad <laughs> um, but basically I will I'll log in so you can see what kind of the back end looks like now cherish also has what they call if i can find it it's not it's a little hidden thing they have the pink room let me find it ah uh, it's here somewhere i think i have to come down here to find it there it is pink book pricing guide little well-kept secret this is what stuff is selling for on cherish let's look up that amberina swung glass vase seven thousand three hundred and seventy-five items wow here we go there's one sold for 190 149 you can see some people are selling yeah. cheap, but you can also see the prices are there. Yes. And it's going to show, it's not going to just stick with the Amberina. It's going to show you all of them. But you notice how all these pictures are all so pristine and nice. Mm -hmm. That's because Cherish takes the first picture you submit and they do this. They make it all pretty. Yeah. That's I beautiful. don't, think I have anything available right I think I took everything that I did let me go to my inactives 
to show you kind of what it looks like. So you can see all mine have this nice. Oh, sure. But if I go into one of the, then you'll see it's, it's my pictures then on my white background. But they always do the first one for you and make it all pretty. And that's it. Now, the cool thing and why I recommend Cherish is that they also do the shipping part. Like, it's beautiful. If you have something you're not comfortable with shipping, like that big humongous swung vase, they have a UPS uh, store drop and go. Uh -huh. Basically, you print out the little form and it's a huge, huge discount on their services. And you take it and you drop it. They package it up and ship it out for you. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, so if you're uncomfortable with, you know, doing all that yourself, then it's a great way to go. Um, Cherish fees. Okay, so here's the thing. You want to have 20 items at least listed at a time. As long as you have at least 20 listings, the fee is 20% commission. There's no listing fee, no other fees. It's 20% when the item sells. If you have less than 20 listings, it's 30%. So, you, and you can make drafts and you can wait until you have, you know, the numbers in there uh, to submit them. Now, keep in mind, they don't accept everything. It's libel. They're going to kick a couple things back and say, no, this didn't qualify. We have too many of these right now, or this just doesn't fit our criteria. It's all curated for interior designers. Um, but I have done so well with Cherish and the prices on Cherish are just way bigger than eBay. Oh, um, great. It's, it's beautiful. Well, there's your 20% uh, right there. Uh, ex you exactly yeah. you can you can raise the price 20 percent over what you would get on ebay for sure and ebay's honestly ebay's up to about 15 percent, so it's not that big of a difference exactly yeah without yes. the shipping <laughs> benefit like sally's saying be sure you spell it correctly c-h-a-i-r-i-s-h <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, and I have really, 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 really been pushing my friends at List Perfectly to add Cherish. And, you know, I bugged them again last week. And like, please, please. <laughs> but I, I've i used a virtual assistant because I, I, a, a, I do everything on spreadsheets. And I'll go through my spreadsheet and I say, okay, these are the items that I want cross-posted to Cherish. They go to my eBay listing. They grab the pictures. They grab all the info and they list it for me. So even without list perfectly yet, um, it's still pretty easy to cross-post over there. I have to thank you so much. You have taught me so much and brought the interest to the game in my eyes. I, I am very thankful for your help. I am so excited to watch your journey now, seeing it, you know, like your very first item you're going to list. So yeah. please stay in touch and let me I know. Will. I will. I'll always be in the background watching your videos. I look forward to them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Danny. Continued health. Get well. Thank you. Take care. All right, so I'm watching the clock closely because I do have to meet my mover. I'm I'm really excited. I feel like like this new chapter is starting. I did something yesterday that was so hard for me. So for those that may not know, since December 2000, I don't remember exactly what day in December 2019. I'll have to go back and look. Um, I made the commitment that I was going to start doing daily videos and I have done a daily content. Um, sometimes they were lives, but I've done daily content since that point in December, almost two years ago. And yesterday was the first day I put up nothing and I did it as a little bit of a a little OCD knock on the head kind of a thing to myself because in my mind, I had this vision that my channel was going to crash. I was going to lose my income source. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to pay my rent next month. And I got to tell you, none of that happened. None of that happened. 
And it's kind of a relief, like, oh, I can take a day off. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't really want to. I like, I like my track record, but I was just mortified that, you know, I was going to miss a day. But then I realized, like, sometimes you just have to. Sometimes you just you just have to go with the flow. And it was a really good lesson for me and uh, a retraining of the brain a little bit. And, oh, Marie, I see you popped on. Yay. So I wasn't sure if Marie was going to make it. I'm, Marie, I'll get you on in just a second. Um, but, yeah, you know, guys, I, I have picked up more subscribers this last week um, than I have in the last several weeks. And um, and I was really worried about that, too, because, you know, I had a live that didn't go so well. And I had a lot of people unsubscribe. Yes, they did. And, and it's okay. You know what? I'm okay with that now. Um, and I picked up so many more of you. So thank you, everybody. I'm human. What? Tiger, don't spoil my false image of myself. <laughs> no, yeah, sometimes being human is hard. I have really, honestly, this last two weeks, I've done so little that it's really felt weird and it's been boring and I'm ready to jump back into work. I'm just ready. I'm just ready. Okay, Marie, let's bring you on, my friend. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine, staying warm. Excellent. That's right. So for those who don't know, Marie is in Alaska. Yes, I am. It's 37 this today. <laughs> no and with snow and rain mix. <laughs> oh boy. So what happened? Like, like, what's your progression into like winter? Does it just now start just getting? We started getting snow in, we called it termination dust. And it is uh, when it, the snow starts hitting on the on the mountains, and then um, as it progresses down, we know that winter is is uh, getting close. <laughs> and so we had we had snow in September, but uh, not a lot, but some, and uh, we had snow last week. Wow. Somebody was saying turtle, turtle. I just wanted to show one of my one of my guys came out for a drink this morning. Yeah, snapped oh. a picture of him. That's tiny. He's got, he shoved all of his straw into his water bowl. I don't know what to do about him. He's just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your question for me? What you got? Oh my. Let me get used to this camera here. <laughs> oh my, that, wait, what? Oh, those are storytellers on top of a turtle. Yes, and I can't find anything on it. Oh, what's it made of? It feels, it feels like it may be, let's see here. The sticker was gone. It might be resin. It looks like resin. Um, Generally, you can tell that because of the detailing. If it was pottery, you'd see imperfections in some of that detailing and like the lines and things. Um, whereas because resin's made in a mold, it's more, <clears throat> it's more perfect, for lack of a better word. And I don't know what it's called. I can't seem to locate anything. All right. Well, let's take a look. So, oops, let me share my, I always forget to share my screen. So you go with what you know. So you may not have known it, but that is a storyteller. Um, oh. It's a Native American thing. A lot of them um, down in the Southwest where it is like a, a person, a Native American woman sitting with children crawling all over her. I've never seen one with a turtle. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so I literally just typed in storyteller 
turtle here let me make this bigger should have done that before and then the first one that came up was this jack graham whimsical art turtle pueblo kids resin i think that's supposed to say resin statue sculpture storyteller they got that one for 99.99 but here's your typical ones that are made of pottery but it's interesting the first one that came up looks pretty much like what you have yes it does yeah, none of these other ones match. So let's go over to souls. See if there's any souls. I'm going to sort by highest price. And yeah, those are pottery yeah. ones. So there we go. So now this is interesting. So yeah. pretty sure now we can say this is what you have. Um, because we've now found two results that are pretty much the same thing. So what I would do is I'm just going to take some of this. I'm not going to take the whole title and I'm going to now redo this. Jack Graham. I'm going to take out all these words and see if anything comes up. Just that one result. And how many are listed? Probably just that one result. Also, everyone watching, this is why you don't need to do sponsored. Do not do promoted listings on your highly unique, unusual things because you're just giving eBay money. You don't need to give them. Look at that. Somebody is paying for the thing that they only are the only ones that have one. So don't do that. Um, yeah. I like those prices better than I like the sold price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what? And then price in this range. And this is the beautiful thing about how the algorithm works now. That sold one is going to fall off. You know, that could be a fluke. Could be somebody just didn't know any better. This is a fairly rare thing. Even though it's, it's uh, resin, it's still a fairly rare thing. There's one available on eBay. You list yes. yours, now there's two. And I would, I would dare to say, make yours a little bit more expensive. Make it a little bit more expensive because here's what can happen then. Then this person's becomes the one that maybe somebody grabs. And now there's that sold comp that gives value to yours because you're, there's still yours and one other one out there. The other thing is they don't have best offer you put best offer on yours at a slightly higher price. Now somebody comes and offers you this same price. See how that works? Right. So use that strategy. Uh, but I'd be very, very confident using the information from this listing. It's, it's the same critter. Let's see. <laughs> Show yours so again. It is. Oh yeah. That's, that's the same critter. That's the same guy. He's fantastic. And maybe do a little Google search now that you know it's Jack Graham. Go see what you can find out about Jack Graham. And yeah, just use strategy. You got you got the only other one out there that's being listed on eBay. It's really cute. It is cute. Well, anything with a turtle is cute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. Yay. I can't wait to see you uh, list it and get it sold, my friend. Yes. Yes. And I like um, Jack Sparrow back there, too. What? <laughs> over your shoulder, Jack Sparrow. Oh, yeah. I got that at a yard sale. He's very cool. Look at that. That's very cool. Love it. You getting him listed or are you keeping him? Um, I'm going to list him. I, um, he has a sword. He's not, um, he's not, I don't know what he's actually made of. He probably looks resin too. It has a Disney stamp on its foot oh. with NECA 2004. Oh, just 
popping on here a little bit. <laughs> I yeah. So I don't have a box. Yeah, I get that. I don't have a box for him. Um, Who doesn't have a box? $250. I bought several things from this lady and um, uh, she said to see, um, they wanted $10 just for him. But then when I had other things, I said, what would you do um, if I, you know, for all of this, can you give me a, a lump sum price? And she told me, sure, which if I took the number of items that I purchased and divided it out, then I ended up only paying $3 for him. There you go. So um, I know that there's a few people that will um, sell their they if they set, buy a whole lump sum of things they will um divide it out into you know sure. what each item actually cost right. after um, their yeah. price so i do have one other piece that i don't know uh, we'll have several but we got about 30 seconds left okay Oh, that looks like Chokin art. C H O K I N. It is. Yes. Um, and um, let's see here. You normally see plates. You don't see a lot of vases in the Chokin. It's about eleven mm -hmm. inches tall. Yeah. So looking at. Sold notices from the United Kingdom with $75 of shipping included. You guys don't discount what somebody is willing to pay that includes that shipping when you're doing your pricing. So don't you always have, have to look to see where it's coming from too as their yeah. uh from their pricing? Absolutely. So I was gonna say I put it at about 25 to 30. Okay. Seems to be I about I paid four ninety nine for it. Oh, there you go. Good job. Yeah, there's. I mean, and then you have some. This is what gets confusing as you go over here and you go, "Oh my gosh, here's some in the 150, 160." Now it's probably a little optimistic, but it can. I mean, it has to do with the art that's on it, the desirability, and just you know, if somebody's doing show and tell versus uh, wanting yeah. to show kind of stuff, but. You'll always see a few unrealistic things and then you get down to reality. And I mean, you could price it in the $50 range and see what happens. Do the best offer. People love to do 50% of your listed price as a best offer. And if you just remember that and price accordingly on this stuff, there's no set market values. Let's right. all keep that in mind on this stuff. The market value is what somebody's willing to pay at any given time. So there's no shame in pricing high. There's no shame in testing the market. And there's no shame in taking half of an offer. And I mean, we can't get mad at people, you know, for lowballing. Can't go broke making a profit. We're here to sell this stuff. So just price knowing people are going to make those offers. Yeah, I um, get discouraged when somebody prices, you know, sends me an offer and it's really low. And then when I make a counter offer, um, they just, they just. Um, most counter offers will disappear. Most people don't, most people don't. Hold on one second. Let me just let my movers know. Hold on. I'm coming, guys. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Uh, when people when people want to counter yes. a counter. Most people, I don't want to go back and forth. Some will, um, but for the most part, I know Melissa's saying, look at the time. I know. That's why I just messaged him. Yeah. I'm only two minutes away. Um, but that's why, you know, you have to decide, is that an offer that's going to make you a good profit 
nine times out of 10, I say, take the money and run. Take the money and run. It's like having the fish on the hook and you're, and you're reeling it in. And if you jerk the hook too hard, sometimes the fish is going to fall off and swim away. And yeah. If you steady reel them in, boom, you got your fish, you got your sale, you got your profit. And you can go take that money and go buy something else with it. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming on, Marie. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> Everyone, we will, if you like this, we'll do this again. I'm very, very pleased that everybody had good connection. We're able to hear. I was always my worry is like we wouldn't be able to, you know, get good connections and hear everybody okay. But I, I think this worked out really good and it was really fun. Fun for me too. Um, I hope you all got some of your questions answered or got some new strategy to use. We will uh we'll we'll do this again. Um, oh, you guys are asking questions over there. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Something about t-shirts, but I don't know what it was. So if anybody would like to do this again next week, um, if you guys are all game, I'll, I'll do this again next week. Please send an email to the niche lady at gmail.com and uh, we can get you on for next week's show. How would that be? Just send me that even put in the subject line Monday show. Just put Monday show so that I can keep it all organized and all of that. Um, to everyone who is waiting on their jewelry mystery box, um, as you know, I haven't touched anything. I have been made sure that I'm not gonna like spread cooties to anybody, but as of tomorrow, I am clear. Um, so I will be putting those together very soon and getting them on their way. I appreciate your patience with me. I appreciate your support, your prayers. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to my guests who came on today. And now with that, go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, everyone.